What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Pillow Talk. My name is Shane Wilson, and as always, I am your host. And as you can see, we are in a new location. We're in my new apartment, and I'm here with my first guest in the new location, my good friend, Justino Vasquez. Justino, say what's up to the people. What's up, guys? I'm not even going to lie. It felt kind of weird calling you Justino right now because yeah. I never call you that. Yeah. My boy, Stino, you know, but That's I'm super cool, glad man. to have Stino here on the podcast, on the show. Um, I have some great questions for him. We're going to have a great conversation. I'm so excited you're here, man. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say to the people before we get started? Um, I'm just happy to be here. Looking forward to this. All right. Let's do this thing. So my first question for you, we're just going to get to know Stino a little bit today. I'm afraid this guitar is going to fall, so i got to keep eye on it. <laughs> my first question for you, this is a super easy question, okay? Okay. Who is your favorite biblical figure? <laughs> That's easy, right? Um, yeah, well, of course I'd have to go with Jesus. Okay, Jesus, but, do, so yeah, other than Jesus, Jesus other than count. Jesus, other than Jesus. Um, so I would probably go with David. David, okay. David, okay. David and Moses. Okay, what makes you say David? I say David just because um, he went through a lot of, I don't want to say hardships because I feel like every person in the Bible has went through hardships, Yeah. but David because he was really vulnerable with God. Okay. And I know even though sometimes I'm not always vulnerable with God, um, the times that I am, uh, I definitely feel more and more like him. Yeah. And I'd say Moses, um, not because of anything I can connect to him with, but just because, like, I feel like he was, like, foreshadowing Jesus in the Old Testament with yeah. a lot of things that he was doing. Yeah. So. Okay. Those are good answers. I like those answers. So this next question, this is this is really, I think this is the question on everyone's mind, um, that when they see you, they're like, this is the question I want to ask this guy. If you were going into war <laughs> and you could ride any animal into battle, what animal would you ride? The first thing that came to my mind was a horse. A horse? But, yeah. Um, okay, okay. But I would like to ride a lion, but I don't... Not nah, bro. Even sure. there, there, that's your answer then. A lion. But I don't know if they would be able to like actually run fast while carrying... I mean, it probably can because it's how strong they are, but a bear would be pretty fire too, though. Like a grizzly bear? Yeah. Or like a polar bear? Dude, a polar bear is huge. Dude. Or a panda bear? Nah, I'll go with a polar bear, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and this would be too slow. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now you have it. Now, now, there you go. There's the answer to the question. Yeah. <laughs> so my ne my next question, we're gonna we're gonna be transitioning back to the Bible a little bit. Okay. This one I feel like may be a hard it may be a harder question, or you might just have an answer right off the top of your head. What is your favorite book of the Bible? Job. Job. Yeah. Okay. Job. Explain explain to us a little bit. Why is Job your favorite? So Job is my favorite book of the Bible because it not only ends on a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. but it seeks to answer the question of the meaning of life. Mm -hmm. And um the wisdom liter the wisdom literature in general, um, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Job, is what first I would say initially draw me towards the Bible and actually like had me like read it consistently yeah. and extensively. Um, so Job, because life couldn't get any worse for anyone else on the <laughs> earth besides him. That's and fair. he, he still believed in God. He still went after him, cried out to him, talked to him. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's a very complex and complicated book that I'm still trying to understand. Yeah. And I think that's what I really like about it that yeah. I don't get it, but it's fun to yeah. explore it. Now, would you would you call yourself a Bible nerd? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I uh, if we're talking about like on Tim Mackey's level, no. <laughs> but I'd probably say to the average person, I would say I probably know a little bit more than the average person. Okay, okay. I I think Stino is definitely a Bible nerd. <laughs> um, and so I want to ask you. This actually wasn't a question I had on here, but I was thinking about it. So in you, I know you really enjoy studying scripture. You enjoy studying the his, historical context of scripture and different things like that. Is there, I know you've learned lots of things, but is there one thing that really sticks out to you that you were studying that you just didn't know where you're like, that's really cool. Just like something that you learned, whether it's about like historical context of something that brought extra weight or just like double meaning of story or just something you completely missed maybe in an original reading, but when, after going back and studying it that you learned. That's a amazing question actually um i feel like that's definitely the kind of question sheesh. where it's like you need to prepare for it but yeah, that's, oh well 
Uh, I'm just going to ask you on the spot. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Um, man, when you said that, there's so many things that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say, uh, I'd say when I first started looking to the historical and cultural context of the Bible, when I learned about Genesis in its historical and cultural context, mm -hmm. that really changed everything for me. Yeah. Cause it was just, it was, I feel like I was, it got to the point where I feel like I was like literally in a different world. Cause before I, when I would read Genesis, I was like thinking of the big bang. I was thinking of, you know, dinosaurs, like where's the yeah, stuff at? Yeah. But then now reading it in its cultural context, it was so vastly different mm -hmm. that it's like, it's changed my whole perspective on how I like to even read the Bible. Yeah. Like I feel like now answers that should like questions that I have that should be getting answered are getting answered mm -hmm. while other ones that I thought should have gotten answered just really weren't that important yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, so I would say that's probably the first one, but my favorite one though, um, I would probably say learning about Job, how Job wasn't an original, um, it wasn't originally written by Hebrews. Scholars mm -hmm. think that it was possibly written by uh, the Babylonians or the Egyptians. And that blows me away because it's, yeah. I think it's not only the oldest book inside the Bible, but um, it's also in the um, Old Testament canon and the Jews read yeah, it. Yeah, it's so like, I think it's, it, I think it's really, really interesting. And um, the portion of, I might be pronouncing the name wrong, but Elihu, I think, the young man who talks to Job, mm -hmm. um, that portion of scripture was added years after um, Job was put together. And if you're wondering where I got that from, that is from an introduction to the wisdom literature by Derek Kidner. There you go. Um, Citation. <laughs> yeah, citations. Yeah. He got his sources. But, um, but it, it's, 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 yeah, that, that, now that really blew me away. Um, Cause it's, because, of course, that's my favorite book of the Bible. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, yeah, that's just like, that blows my mind. Like, it's the oldest book in the Bible, but yet, like, the Jew didn't write it. And yeah. the Jews are reading it and stuff. That's that I really think it's really cool. Yeah, no, yeah. that is really cool. That's awesome. So, I know um, you have a lot of interests in a lot of different things. But I want to ask you, beyond interests, what is something that you're passionate about? <laughs> like, that where it just gets you, it yeah. just is like... It gets you on fire when you're just like thinking about something that you're super passionate about. Well, I would 100% say I'm extremely passionate about the Bible. About That's a great answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm extremely passionate about the Bible, learning about the historical and cultural context, learning about the literary styles, but also going a little bit into the Hebrew and Greek. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's what I'm very passionate about. I get very excited when we talk about things like that. That's great. That's yeah. great. So... I know you, you're you starting a podcast soon, Yeah. which I think you already have the channel for it, right? Yes. Yes. yes so if, YouTube, so yes. if you want to send that to me, I'll put it in the link of this video. So if people <laughs> are interested in it, they can go check it out. And I know the first episode isn't out and it won't be out for till next yeah. year, right? Yeah. Till like, January. Um, we will have a couple videos up in January. Tell, tell the people a little bit about that, about that podcast, just kind of what your goal is for that. You and, Mar you and Marlon are the ones mm -hmm. doing it, right? Yeah. So yep. just tell the people a little bit about it. Yeah. So um, my podcast is called Exitazo. So if you don't know what that is, that's a Greek word in the New Testament that means to examine strictly. I knew what to that seek was. Out <laughs> and to investigate. <laughs> um, and my YouTube channel is really just to be a resource to people who want to dive deeper into the scriptures, um, explore controversial issues relating to Christianity. But not only that, but see how Christianity relates to those controversial issues, like yeah. what a Christian should think, how they should think. And um, what's the ambiguity in all of that, too? Um, so that's what my YouTube channel is all about. If you're into that, definitely check it out. We'll, so we'll be having some teachings on Ecclesiastes pretty, serious pretty soon. stuff, very similar to my YouTube channel and all the stuff we do over here. It's very <laughs> serious, very, very, very well thought out. Yeah. Yeah, very <laughs> insightful. <laughs> yeah. It's, I like this, though. This is, this is more laid back. I feel like my YouTube channel might, I feel it could have some pushback from people. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> at least you're aware yeah. of that. At least you accept the fact that that, yeah. that that is a possibility, you know. So, speaking of controversial topics, um, I don't know if you've ever heard. This is an ongoing debate on the internet. Um, extra medium. So, <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna explain it to you. So, obviously, there are different sizes of t-shirts and things. 
There's extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. If extra medium were to exist as a size, do you think it would go between small and medium or medium and large? Is this really a debate or are you messing with me? <laughs> I'm messing with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was lost because I, when I think of medium, that's medium. But what do you think no... extra medium would be? I would assume that it would be either, it would either be just small or large. Where I, what do you I think, wouldn't though? Would it be small or do you think it would be large? Because, I mean, obviously, by definition, extra medium is not a thing. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense, yeah. But if it were to exist, where do you think it would go? Uh, I feel like it would have to be both. They would have to Whoa. have something on both ends just because it's medium, so it has to have something for both since it's in the middle. So it would be like extra medium small and extra medium large? Yeah. And then just medium still in the middle. Yeah. Well, That doesn't really make sense. You might as well just get a large, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's actually, like, said, I'm surprised you made that up. You that's said, like, are you messing with me right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. So this next question, uh, this this is an interesting question. I, I like asking people this question. I've asked a few people, a few different people before on and off Pillow Talk. What do you think, in your opinion, is the most innovative invention to have ever been created? Personally, I think it's rollerblades. Rollerblades. <laughs> Um, and there's this, there's question. really not a right or wrong answer to this. It's just your opinion. Greatest you know? invention? Yeah, just like the most innovative invention ever created. Whether it's had like a big impact or it's just like, I don't know how somebody thought of that. I'd say a book. Book. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say a book. That's a good answer. Yeah. The reason why I would say a book is because books, have, I feel like, have impacted the way we see the world and mm -hmm. how we even live and communicate to each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say, I would say a book and I think books are probably never going to go away. And if they do go away, they'll just change in form. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would say a book is probably the most impactful thing. That's a way better answer than rollerblades. <laughs> 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 so this next question, this is not about any like specific topic. This is about you about okay. getting to know you. If you could only listen to three musical artists for the rest of your life, who would they be? Um, that's a good question. I don't really listen to rap that much anymore. I would say when I was listening to rap a lot, I would say J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Oh, I want to choose my words carefully at this last one. <laughs> I, I, think I, I think I know what you were just thinking. I'm trying to think. Uh, automatically, I got to go with J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, but I'm trying to think of the last one. People might not like it, but I'm going to say Drake. Drake is fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's valid. But as of music now, I don't really listen to music that much. I'd probably just, I listen to a lot of classical music. Okay. So, but I don't know classical artists like that. <laughs> you just be putting it on. Yeah, just be putting it on. So, I don't know if you're that more helps. of a podcast. Guy, yeah, huh? I'm more of a podcast guy. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> there you go. Now you know. So I know you are a military brat. You've moved oh, yeah. around a lot. You lived a lot of different places. What are some? Yes. Of, you don't have to list all of them, but what are some of the different places that you've lived throughout your life? Um, I've lived in Germany for two years, mm -hmm. um, or maybe three, maybe three years. Um, I lived in Louisiana for five years. And I also lived in New York for three years. Okay. So of the different places you've lived, including whether it was moving with your family from the military or when you were in college for a couple of years, where is your favorite place that you've ever lived? My favorite place, if I'm being honest, is Oklahoma. Second would be Germany. Let's go, Oklahoma. Yeah. Yeah, you've heard me give this answer before. Um, the reason why I pick Oklahoma is because it's it's not too city ish. Mm -hmm. um, I would I feel like I'm I'm not a whole whole like city boy, but like yeah. I, I would say I'm more comfortable yeah. leaning more towards that. But um, yeah, I like how it's like kind of city ish, kind of suburban, um, but not too country. I'm not really big on country. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, being we're honest. breaking the stereotype. <laughs> we're in, Oklahoma is not that rural. Yeah, it's it's really not that well. Uh, the part that I'm in, it's not that. It's well, not that they're country. definitely our parts. Yeah, <laughs> definitely our um, parts. I would say Edmond and Oklahoma City are 
good middle ground if you're like you don't want to be 100 percent in the city but you also don't want to be 100 percent in the country you yeah. want like a middle place yeah. i would say this is a pretty good place to be yeah great answer great answer like i said you've you've moved around around a lot with your family um in your family you're the oldest of four boys mm-hmm. you have three younger brothers i want to ask you this question if you and your brothers got into an all-out brawl <laughs> the four of you who is coming out the winner that would be me 100 percent. okay can you talk me through that talk me through yeah. how would this fight go would it even be um, close or is it just you by a mile because I, I i'll would admit say, all, i feel like all four of you guys you're pretty athletic yeah you're all pretty strong yeah. i feel like you could all hold your own yeah so talk me through how this fight would go um so the thing is is that i've never have fully like went all out with my brothers Mm -hmm. even when we fought yeah the one time i did i regretted it Mm -hmm. um and it was to my younger brother the second oldest caleb um and i 100 percent regret that Mm -hmm. so i honestly don't know how the fight would play out but um i would think the person i would probably have to the, the one that would probably give me the most trouble i feel like would probably be camden I was about to say, I think Camden's winning. I don't even care. I don't even care that you're sitting right here. Camden's winning, bro. <laughs> no, yeah, I feel I feel like Camden. He would probably give me the most trouble, but no, I, I think I would. Camden I think is he's sixteen, him. right? Or is he? He's sixteen. Yeah, he's sixteen. Yeah. Bro is ripped. Yeah, he is. He is ripped. Yeah. <laughs> Not that that's yeah. all it takes to win yeah. the fight, but it's just like he's a sixteen year old. He's ripped. I don't know. No offense to the rest of you guys. But <laughs> I, I think Camden would be the winner, bro. Yeah, I, I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion. Now, now that we talked about, well, who, who, who do you think would? So, Joshua's name didn't even come up. You think he would just get smoked by everybody else? No, I don't think because Josh- <laughs> we well, just had this whole conversation and neither of us mentioned him. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it's really interesting though because I don't, I don't know because like we're all different athletically. Mm-hmm. So like I would say I'm probably like the the most athletically well rounded. Okay. Okay. I would say Joshua is probably more speed, mm-hmm. but I don't know about the strength. Okay. Jo- Cameron, I would 100 percent say just say strength. Yeah, I don't know about speed either about him, but he's definitely strength. Caleb, I'd also say Caleb is pretty well rounded too, um, but I feel like Caleb, then again, also doesn't really work out. So mm-hmm. um, I work out. Um, I would say I'm decently strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you you haven't worked out with me, so I guess you don't really know. But hey, um, I don't work out with anyone. If that <laughs> makes you feel any better, <laughs> um, but, not do it by myself. But yeah, and uh, I, I'd say, I'd say, I, I got. I'd say if I didn't know how to fight, then yeah, Camden would beat me. But because I'm bigger than Camden, and then on top of that, I know how to fight. Yeah, yeah I don't think he's gonna win. Dang. Plus, I'm also Sorry, smart. Camden. I know I know what to go for and know what not to do with Camden. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So now that now that we talked about fighting. We're going to switch to the other gear. I want you to tell me, what is your favorite thing about each of your brothers? My favorite thing? Your favorite thing about <laughs> each of your brothers. I know that's um, a tough question, yeah, huh? Yeah. That, no, that's actually not too tough. I don't know. If somebody asked me that about Caleb? my brother, I wouldn't be able to come up with an answer. <laughs> that guy sucks. <laughs> Caleb, I love how... Um, how do I say this? I love how... trying to choose my words because I don't want to make him sound like a butt crack but like <laughs> he's like if you have an argument or like you have an you don't opinion make him sound like a butt yeah crack. yeah like if, if 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 he if you have like an argument or an opinion a strong opinion mm-hmm. he is really good at pushing back on it okay yeah like really really good and honestly I would say um probably not in debates but like just discussions mm-hmm. With strong opinions involved, I think I'm decently good at defending my side simply you, you, because you enjoy of him engaging in a debate. Yeah, oh, I I don't want to say debate. I I enjoy discussions. Okay, I enjoy discussions because I feel like not much could come out of debate because you're just trying to beat the other person. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I would say Caleb really good at helping you think for yourself and like know what you're talking about because he questions a lot joshua he's hilarious he is he's funny. just funny. He is funny and he keeps it real he keeps it real he's hilarious and he keeps it real camden he's cool 
he's just cool he's just a chill guy he's you know he's, it gets a little annoying how often he like constantly has to just do push-ups randomly out of nowhere because <laughs> it like makes him the, like we'll all be at the dinner just eating talking and he'll yeah. just out of nowhere just do some push-ups it's like yeah. dude what are you doing you know but yeah. i mean you know hey that's so that's, that's that's a choice i we respect just, it we just we went to uh like a student's church camp fairly recently fall retreat and we were there for like maybe three i think three days two nights mm-hmm. if i had a dollar for every time i just was looking around and just saw camden doing push-ups <laughs> I'd have a decent amount. I'd have like twenty yeah. bucks, probably. Which probably more than that, maybe. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it was for for a, for such a small sample size. It was like I saw this dude do a ton of push-ups. Yeah, he does a lot of push-ups. He's all about calisthenics. Yeah. Who of I know I'd say would you say all four of you guys are fairly competitive? Yes. Who's the most competitive? I don't know. It depends. Actually, I would say it depends, what? On it depends on, the, on yeah, what it, it is. Yeah, it depends on what it is. Because like, if I really don't care. I really don't care. Like I don't. I'm not gonna yeah. compete. Yeah. But if it's like basketball or like a video game or a board game or something, I'd say we're all like actually like decently competitive. Like we do not quit. Yeah. I mean um, this in the nicest possible way. I would hate to play like Uno with your family. Really? Because I feel like all of you guys would be like super competitive. My family. Yeah. I'd and say I love we your are family. I don't mean that. Like, I don't mean that. Like I don't want to hang out with your family. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it would get so intense. Yeah. So fast. No, we're we're pretty competitive. We're pretty competitive. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. Are your parents competitive too? Yeah. I'd say my parents. Yeah, so it's just awesome. I feel like my mom's probably not too competitive, but I even say she yeah, she is to a certain degree. Okay. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. So we we one of the one of the first things we talked about was the extra medium debate. Mm-hmm. And so that was kinda one where I I think I did see that on Twitter, but it wasn't like an actual debate people are having. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna look up dumb internet debates that people have and i just want to hear your opinion on them okay so okay. that's literally what we're gonna do this, this sounds fun actually. so i have no idea what these are so i'm not prepared for these i'm gonna 11 silly things the internet has okay this is from 2019 but we'll, we're gonna do this anyways um what's the best way to draw no i don't like that one okay 30 dumbest conversations on the internet because we're you know we're not gonna de- get into the debates of like actual serious stuff this is a show <laughs> called pillow talk where we're sitting here with john cena and a pink neon sign so this is not what this show's for you know <laughs> but we're yeah. just gonna go through here we i want to find man i gotta find i gotta find a good article i guess i should have found the article beforehand but that's a well well here while i look for it i'm gonna give you the first one that just popped into my head that i have seen <laughs> on the internet is water wet is water wet <laughs> oh yeah i remember this debate yeah there we go is water wet um wet that's an adjective right yes yeah that's an adjective so that's describing something but wet is when water is on something not not water though huh technically i don't know that's up to you bro that's the that's the whole debate (laughs) is water wet i'd say water is not wet you say water is not wet yeah okay the reason why I say that is because only something that is dry that doesn't have water on it um, is not wet, but it only gets wet when water is on it. So I guess something's only wet when water is applied to it, not when water is applied to itself, because that kind of defeats the purpose, I guess. There you go. My argument for this, I agree with you. I don't. Yeah, I don't really. But I, well, I'm I would just, always say I, I'm not. Head on, I'm not stuck on any position though that's just what i got so my my thing my is head. i don't think water is wet kind of like what you said it's like it can't get itself wet just as like fire burns things it but fire is not though. burnt yeah you know what i mean and so it's the same thing to me my next one and this I, I'll, i'm gonna i'm still looking for an article here is a hot dog a sandwich no how come what how would you define a sandwich i would define a sandwich is meat with Two slices of bread, lettuce, tomatoes, similar to a sub. Okay. But much smaller. Well, what about an Oreo? An Oreo? Because an Oreo is called a cookie sandwich, and it doesn't have any of the things that you just said. Well, I'd say the concept why it has the sandwich added to it is because it has two, um, you know, the chocolate on the mm-hmm. top, chocolate mm-hmm. on the bottom, and the cream S- to the middle. So the hot dog has bread on both sides. Yeah. So it's, But it's still not a sandwich. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't call it a sandwich. Cause for the same purpose of with the Oreo, I mean, I've never heard 
someone call an Oreo a cookie what about sandwich. An ice cream but I mean, sandwich? yeah, it's the same. I would say it's the same concept. You got the the bread on top, mm-hmm. but with the hot dog, you don't really have one bread on top or on the well, bottom. You have it more on the a side. Hot dog, and again, I honestly don't know what my stance is on this. I'm just <laughs> just arguing against you, just for entertainment purposes. Yeah. <laughs> A hot dog is the same as like a sub sandwich because a sub sandwich, the bread is still usually connected. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes so it depends like, on what sub you're talking it's like about. A, it's yeah. like a hoagie or something. Yeah. It's like it's usually still connected. And so a hot dog, if you turn it, it's just a sub sandwich. There's not as much in there. There's just I would like, say that's a pretty good point. There's just like in there. You know? Yeah, I would say that's a pretty good point. But I would also say that usually a sub also has more than just meat or ketchup and mustard. But what if it just had meat? What if it just had meat? Is it not a I sandwich mean, anymore? Uh, I guess that would be a good point. I mean... I mean, maybe, I guess it depends on what type of meat it is. You know, I love to play the cynic. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I guess it really all depends on the size, I guess. But I don't know. Like, you heard it here first, dog, guys. Well, it, you heard what Stino said. It's oh. all about size. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about size. That's what matters. I don't know if a hot dog is smaller than a sandwich, though, but I don't know. Okay. Okay. We're, we're, we're going to do this is the first article that popped up, and I'll link this so you guys can see. What is the best way to draw an X? There's all these different ways that they're presenting to you. They all look the exact same. Well, you got to look at the arrows, which way the arrows are pointing and the number of the arrows. So it's like, do you do it like that? Or do you do it like yeah. that? Or like that? What do you think is the best way to draw an X? I'm trying to think of how I do it. I do number seven. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, I do number seven too. For real? Yeah. All right, there you go. Number seven is the best way. Number eight looks the exact same. No, but number eight, you do this one first. You do the yellow one first. Okay. Number seven, you do that way. I feel like it doesn't really matter which one you do first. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, number seven, I guess, it's because that's just the one I do. The next one, these are called St. Louis style bagels. They're cut, They're like sliced like that. What are your thoughts on that? I don't like it at all. Is, that is not how a bagel should be served. No. It's, if you're going to cut it, you just need to cut it down the middle, like yeah. this way. I agree. Okay, okay. Yeah, it looks more wrong. Should you bite or lick your ice cream? So, I would say it depends on the ice cream. Okay. I guess, because like, like when you go to a, a, you know, an ice cream truck, they give you, um, you know that, uh, what's it called? That strawberry shortcake? Ice yeah. cream thing with like the sprinkles all over yeah, it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like my favorite. Yeah. But with that, I can't lick that. Yeah. You know, like I have to literally bite into well, that. So let's say you go to the ice cream shop or whatever, ice cream parlor. Uh huh. You get an ice cream cone and it's just like vanilla ice cream on there. Should you lick or bite it? I'd say lick it because like, I mean, if you want to bite it, you can. For me, it it's you know the cold kind of bugs my teeth a little bit. Okay. Not all the time, but like okay. sometimes. Okay. So that's why I don't bite into it. Oh, right, there you go. There you go. What is the best way to do toast? Definitely not nine or eight. It can't be number one either. That's just nah, bad. Yeah, That's definitely not number one either. I'd say I say six. Four, five, and six. Four, five, and six. Okay. And again, we're gonna have this link down below if you, if you guys want to want to debate this <laughs> with us. Um, does the person flying in the middle seat of the plane get both armrests? Heck no. Who do you, how do you decide no. who gets the armrest? If I'm being honest, if I'm sitting in the middle, I'm not even going to use an armrest because really? it just feels awkward. Yeah. You know, like I assert like, my dominance. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, um, but uh, I would say just choose one because I feel like if you're going to use both, it's a little selfish. Okay. Fair enough. That's fair. That's fair. We're going to skip that one because neither of us know the best way to put on a bra. <laughs> do, you, do you have to wash your legs in the shower? Yes. No. What? No. You let the you don't wash you just your let legs. The water and the soap. You don't wash your wash. legs. It goes down and it gets. You don't wash clean. your legs. No, bro, You're no lying. No there's way. No, there's no dude, no, there's no, no, there's no way. Dude, are you serious? Yeah. Do you scrub down, down there? Yeah, I'm just talking about like my calves and stuff, bro. It'll yes. Get, the soap will get on the way down. Is it? Goes you could down. say the same thing with your junk. Yeah, but that's that's a little Yo, different. what? That's it's a little different. different. Yeah, it's do you clean your feet? There. Do you wash your feet? That's the next one. Oh. Yes, I do wash my feet. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why do you wash your feet, but you don't wash your legs? Because, bro. It's it's <laughs> my feet get really sweaty. My legs don't get sweaty. 
Okay, well, uh, that's a dis- I just disagree with that. <laughs> okay, this one. How many towels should you own? Uh, I don't know. However many you need. I don't know. I don't, is peeling chicken nuggets justifiable? No. That is kind of serial that killer. I think weird. I did that when I was a kid, though. Like the with the chi- with the McDonald's chicken nuggets. Hey, okay, to each his own. <laughs> okay, if a baguette could move, how would it move? <laughs> it's gotta be number, number one. three. Really? Yeah. I think it's gotta be number one, bro. Like a little. That looks kind of nasty. Like a little snake, yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Video. Okay, that was those were all the ones on here. But I have two more that I want to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to look up one of them because I need a picture. And then we'll do the last one last because this is one that I'm passionate about. Um, but this one, <laughs> how would a dog wear pants? How would a dog wear pants? Yeah. Do you think if a dog were to wear pants because it has four legs, would it wear it like this or like this? The one on the right. This one? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And the last one, this is, I'm very passionate about this. Are you team wheels or team doors? Do you think in the entire world that there are more wheels or more doors? Hmm. I don't know. I think that there would be more wheels, but then again, there's like a lot of doors. I think it's, I'm team wheels all the way. Team wheels? Absolutely. Well, I'm also thinking though of the countries that don't have that many cars because they're just poor. Cars aren't the only thing that have wheels. If you think of like a a factory, an assembly line, it's just a bunch of wheels. That's a good If you open a drawer, well, what about the like? Wheels. But what about like the third world countries though that like don't have those? That's factories true, but where, the like, factories the are just so prominent. If they're if they probably I don't know. Factories I don't are know. So prominent like, and they're so, they're they're so long. The assembly lines and all these different ones. It's like there's so many wheels on all of them. If I'm being honest, to really answer this question, I would probably just want to look at all the third world countries and see how many factories, how many cars they have, and if it's an extremely low number, then I would probably go with the the doors because I know. They're going to probably definitely have some sort of door for like a tent or like a. What constitutes as a door? Does it, I would is say a drawer anything a door? Like a drawer? Like those drawers right there. Would you I would that say as a like door? if you're living in something, you have to open and close the entrance of it to get into it mm-hmm. that you're living in. I would constitute that as a door. That's the only thing you would say a door is like if it's separating rooms. No. I feel like drawer, yeah. 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 Like yeah kind of. Yeah. Like a cabinet. That's a door. And like a car has doors, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say it it's constitutes like, the entrance into something that you're living in, or I guess. And then think about all the into. Hot Wheels in the world. Those all have <laughs> wheels. They also have doors, don't they? They no, don't no, open. No, no, they, they don't, they don't open. open. Those don't count. Those are just pictures of doors. That's true. I would still go with, though, with the third world countries, though. I would like to see, like, how many wheels and factories they have. And if they don't, because I'm pretty sure they're not living outside. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's probably some are, but... I feel like they would have some sort of living space that would have a door. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. But I don't know. So I'll, I'll concede and say, yeah, there's probably more wheels. <laughs> so this next one, I'm going to pull this up. I don't want you to see. Okay. This this next segment, this, again, this will be linked down below. Stino and I are going to watch something here. I think there's going to be an ad. Yeah, there's an ad. We'll watch this after the ad. And again, this is linked down below if you want to watch it for yourself. Oh my gosh. So, Stino, I want you to explain to me what's going on here. That is me in high school playing basketball. Now, what, Stino, what kind of player were you on the court? You like, I did my research before this. Um, I'd say in high school, I was probably more of a shooting guard. You were a shooting guard? Were you, yeah. were you like a defensive shooting guard or were you just like a straight scorer or a shooter? What kind of, were you a slasher? What, 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 what kind of player were you? Two way? Um, I would say I was more of like a mid range type of shooting guard. Oh, okay. Like to go. drive in. Good mid range right too. there. Yeah. I see you with the dreads too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's actually with twists. Oh, you my bad. No, but you can't really. Yeah, they look like dreads because you can't really see because of the quality. Oh, but yeah. What a bucket. Yeah, <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would say I was, 
I like to score or at least try to score more. And you got court vision. Yeah. That's what that one said. Yeah. You like how I did my research? Look at this, bro. Yeah, you did actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, if you want to watch oh, Stino's gosh. high school basketball highlights. Oh, he's a three point threat, too. <laughs> oh, look at that. Steph Curry. Okay. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited about that. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm retired though. I don't, I don't play basketball like that anymore. But if you're curious, <laughs> there'll be a link down <laughs> below, <laughs> oh and you can gosh. watch Gino's high school basketball highlights. Is yeah. six? Are you six three? Yes. Are you sure? Uh, yes. <laughs> one ninety. Yeah, at that time, yeah. Was, well, this, well, I'm one ninety now. Actually, this updated, so you are twenty two. Are you sure you're six three? Yes. Okay. No, I'm Whatever you say, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say. That's that's the next that's the next debate the internet's gonna take on <laughs> is you know actually six three. Yeah. Yeah. Before I graduated. I am six three. <laughs> okay, bro. Whatever you say. Um after uh but yeah, no, um I think I was right before I went to college I got to two hundred pounds. Okay. Yeah. Strictly muscle. Yeah, actually, yeah, no, I was like pretty I was pretty big and like ripped. Yeah. Okay. Okay, big man. So, so, you know, I have two questions left for you. And these are the two questions that, going forward, these are the two questions that are going to end every episode of Pillow Talk. They're kind of the staples here. So this first question, I want you to, you can think about it for a second if you need to. So if you could replace Mount Rushmore with any four people for your own life, like your own personal Mount Rushmore with, like, different celebrities or whoever, who would be on that Mount Rushmore? How many presidents are on Mount Rushmore? Four. There's four. There's, yeah, four. There's four. four faces on Mount Rushmore. You get to fill those in, and you're like, this is the Mount Rushmore of Stino's people. And we'll do, like, famous people, because obviously if it wasn't famous people, it would probably be, like, your parents and stuff. And so we'll do we'll do famous people, um, whether that's, like, fam- someone that's famous historically or – I'd say C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis. Okay. Oh, and Jesus. We're not doing Jesus. That's a cop-out oh, answer. Oh, really? Jesus is a cop-out answer. Oh, dang. Okay, I'll do uh, C.S. Lewis, Paul. Okay. You um, see him smile at me like <laughs> that? He's like, oh, you said I can't do Jesus? I'm going to do Paul. Um, I'm going to say Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson? Yeah, I don't know who Jordan B. Peterson. He's a clinical psychologist in okay. Canada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you don't know him, you should check out his videos. He's a very intelligent man. There you go. Um, a lot of people don't like him, but uh, I really like him because I can tell he has a genuine heart for people. Okay. Um, okay. I've read his first book. I really want to read his second book. Um, the book is called Twelve Rules, or no, Twelve Rules and Antidote to Chaos. Okay. Um, absolutely phenomenal book. Uh, one of the few books that have that have impacted me. I've read a good bit of books in there. I'm like, um, but yeah, it's a really, really great book. Yeah. So I'd say, yeah, Jordan B. Peterson. I'm trying to think of uh, someone else. This is a good question. Yeah, this is. I gotta really think. So I have C.S. Lewis, Paul, Jordan Peterson, and the last one. Dang, I really can't say Jesus? No, bro. Jesus is a cop out. <laughs> I don't even care. I love Jesus, but that's a cop out answer. I'm going to go with, I'll say Bruce Metzger. <laughs> I don't know who that is either. He's, um, he's, I think, one of the top, well, he's dead right now, but he dead, died. Dead. But he's, um, he was one of, the, I, I believe, one of the top uh, Christian scholars gotcha. in the New Testament. Okay. I think Old Testament. And he did uh, a lot of work on, um, I think it's called textual criticism gotcha. of the Bible. 
Okay. And he just did a lot of work, and it's helped not only with apologetics, but just with a lot of Christians' faith, with knowing that the Bible is reliable and knowing that um, that it's le- it's legit, nice. and we can we yeah. can put our faith in it. Those are four good answers. I like that. That's yeah. great. Very well thought out. <laughs> <laughs> and the final question, Steve. Yeah. What is the biggest animal that you could beat in a fight? The biggest animal I could beat in a fight? Yeah. Just straight uh, straight hands, no straight hands, no weapons. No weapons. Oh no nice. weapons. Oh my god. Didn't David kill a lion? Daniel. Did David kill a lion? Yeah, didn't David kill a lion? Didn't he do that with his slingshot though? No, no, no. I'm thinking of something. No, else. no, no, Samson. Samson. Samson killed a lion. Bro had super strength, bro. Yeah, that's a good point. Your hair's not long enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was at one point. <laughs> when you had his, tw- when yeah. he had his twists, yeah. you could have. Um, so I don't know, dude. Pa- I asked Pastor Rodney. This I want to say like a wolf, but wolves are also like his answer was too. a mountain lion. A mountain lion. Sawyer's answer was a bear. A bear? Nah, dude. Which is not he's true. not. <laughs> he's My answer is a, a giraffe. A giraffe. A giraffe. Yeah. Oh, why? Because they're not that. They're not that. Well, no, dude, that neck, dude. Giraffes are huge, bro. But I could easily kill a giraffe. And I've gotten into multiple debates with Destiny's dad and brother about this because they don't think that I could. I said, "Bring me a giraffe. Let's see." Dude, they'd be like, "You know how they fight, right?" Yeah, bro. You know how I fight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably. I want to say a wolf. Pastor Christian said he's gonna have to pass because he's scared of all animals. So <laughs> that's what he said when I asked him. <laughs> Yeah, I would probably yeah I would go with the wolf just because like they're very similar to a dog, but I know that they're like way bigger than dogs. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna probably have to say a wolf. I think life I don't or death, know though. If I I'm think being life honest. or death, one singular wolf. Obviously, if it was a pack of wolves, that'd be different. But if yeah. I say life or death, one singular wolf, I think you could be the wolf on a fight. Yeah, but I think it would be a very cool. Like I think I would probably be done at the end. Wolves are huge, dude. They are they really are, big. They are really big. Like I honestly. Like no cap. Look up. Look up like a wolf compared. Yeah. Look wolf, up a wolf, wolf compared wolf, to a dog. Wolves are way bigger than dogs. They are like big. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I would probably say a wolf. I'm definitely not gonna last with a lion. I'm probably gonna die. I don't think. I don't think anyone could beat a lion. Yeah. I don't fight. think anyone's gonna be able to. Beat and a lion. what? Sorry, is that about a grizzly bear? There's no way. Nobody <laughs> could beat a bear in a fight. All right. Well. That's all the questions I have for you. Is there is there anything that you want to ask? Anything you want to say? Anything else you want to talk about before we uh, before we end this episode of Philo Talk? Um, thank you for having me on here. I really appreciated it. Yeah, uh, dude. And yeah, check out my YouTube channel if you're into that type of yep. stuff. Um, with Christianity and in relation to the rest of the world. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Stino, for coming out for being on the show. Um. I hope you guys like the new set. If you have any um, suggestions on anything else I should add to the set, let me know. But Destiny's going to be moving in here when we get married, so everything has to go through her. So <laughs> your suggestions probably won't get put up, but we'll see. Um, but, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Pillow Talk.